Hey guys, I'm Dev. And I'm Andrew, and we'd love to thank the Academy for nominating two nerdy as hell movies for Best Picture this year. Nerd! 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 Jordan Peele's scarily accurate horror film Get Out and Guillermo del Toro's sci-fi fairy tale The Shape of Water. You don't see a lot of Best Picture nominations for sci-fi and horror movies, and wins are basically non-existent, but either one of these films could snag the highest honor this year. In a sea of indie dramas and dry as biopics, they're awesome examples of genre films done right. So with the 90th Academy Awards just around the corner, today we're gonna talk about their chances and why sci-fi and horror never win Best Picture. The Oscars are decided by the Academy of Motion Picture, Arts, and Sciences, a professional organization for pretty much everyone in the movie biz. There's about 7,000 members. Minus one after Harvey Weinstein got his ass expelled last year. True, true. Goodbye. Team Rocket's blasting off again! Bon voyage! And they've got a pretty strict guidelines on who can join and who can vote in the awards. As insiders, they have a vested interest in making movies seem classy and respectable. So they love voting for serious dramas and long, sweeping epics, especially if your movie's literally about how great Hollywood is. It's ridiculous. Although sometimes that's just not enough. It's a good opening number. <laughs> the Academy is stuck in their ways and a lot of members still perceive genre movies like horror and sci-fi as trashy or disposable. It's a miracle that a fantasy film like Return of the King managed to win in 2004. I was just a kid and it excited me that oh, it yeah. won. <laughs> Peter Jackson basically had to bludgeon the voters with more and more endings to make them give in. And since sci-fi and horror really haven't had their day in the sun. Yeah, so let's see how the odds are stacked against The Shape of Water. Will Guillermo del Toro's lifelong fish fixation climax in a well-deserved Oscar? It's definitely a genre film, but it's hard to pin down which genre exactly. On the one hand, it's a fairy tale romance, but on the other, it's also a sharp political allegory, and more than anything else, it's a good old fashioned monster. Del Toro did a fantastic job. There's one scene that's so breathtaking, I can't even hint at what it is, or else it'll ruin the moment. No. But it still might be a little too weird for the Academy. After all, they had a poor track record with science fiction from day one. Here's some money, go see a Star Wars. At the first Oscars in 1929, a war drama called Wings won the top award. It's a pretty impressive silent film, and this dolly shot is spectacular. Literally almost every film class I've ever had has used it to teach me something. Modern directors reference it all the time because it's a decent movie, but it's like Michael Bay's Pearl Harbor compared to Fritz Lang's Metropolis. Yeah. If a Mount Rushmore for sci-fi cinema existed, one, it would look awesome, yeah. and two, Metropolis will have its huge ass robot face on it. It's one of the pillars that the whole genre is built on, but of course, the Academy ignored it and other classics in favor of movies that are basically film school footnotes today. Most early Best Picture winners don't hold a candle to King Kong. I guess you could say they ain't got shit on him. No, I don't, I don't even know how to follow that. <laughs> But it wasn't even nominated for a single award, not even for Willis O'Brien's groundbreaking stop motion effects. They actually managed to achieve a realistic looking ape in the fucking 30s. The Academy threw sci fi movies a bone in 1938 when they introduced the first special effects awards. For a while, technical Oscars like these were the ceiling for sci fi films, with the odd acting nod thrown in here or there. Well deserved, but still no best picture. Not for Alien, not for Blade Runner, not even for fucking 2001 A Space Odyssey. One of my favorite sci fi films of all time, and the first of three Kubrick snubs we're gonna talk about in this video. Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? I really think I'm entitled to an answer to that question. There were only three sci-fi films nominated for Best Picture before 2009. A Clockwork Orange, which lost to the French Connection. Well, uh, well, well, well. <laughs> the Star Wars lost to Annie Hall, and E.T. lost to Gandhi. Wait. The Star Wars, as in Star Wars and A New Hope, lost to Annie Hall. Yeah. A genre-defining space opera that launched a franchise that will be forever be shoved down our throats for years to come, lost to a movie about Woody Allen not being able to keep a girlfriend. Yeah. Great. I'm stopping before I make a complete imbecile of myself. There's no hope there. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't, don't, don't laugh at that. That's really Nah, keep bad. that in. <laughs> Back then, it was impressive enough for a genre movie to be nominated. Today, not so much. In 2009, the Academy expanded the number of Best Picture nominees to 
10, and since then, way more sci-fi films have been in the mix. But with so many nominees, fans of the genre tend to split the vote between their faves, while the rest of the voters rally behind something like Brave. And with The Shape of Water up against a movie like Get Out, they might just knock each other out Rocky II style while The Post cleans up, and I don't want to see that. After all, horror movies don't have the best track record either, so let's get in to Get Out. Objectively, it's a story tailor-made for the Oscars. A bold new director makes a huge debut with a socially conscious match hit. So how long has this been going on, this, this thing? <laughs> Jordan Peele could have easily walked away with Best Picture if he made a tender coming-of-age story or a biopic about some dude who was probably your grandpa's boss in the 20s. But he chose to make a commentary that doubles as a horror satire instead, and the Academy's always been a bit squeamish about that genre, especially when the subject matter involves race. They looked away when it came to classics like Frankenstein and Dracula, and not even Alfred Hitchcock could coax them into the shower with Psycho. People didn't really start to take horror films seriously until Rosemary's Baby in 1968, but the Academy stayed stingy with the best picture nods. Yeah, nothing for The Omen or Halloween. Oh, and guess how many Razzies The Shining was nominated for? How many? Two. Ugh. Guess how many Oscars? How many? Zero. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains. <laughs> I'm gonna bash them right the f in. <laughs> it was a weak year then. Yeah. <laughs> In hindsight, it could have probably easily won, but Kubrick only got a single Academy Award for his entire career. Four visual effects on 2001, damn straight. William Friedkin's The Exorcist was the first horror film nominated for Best Picture in 1973. Its excellence was plain on his vomit encrusted face, and the traditionally traditional Academy had no choice but to nominate a literally blasphemous movie. Don't you blaspheme in here, don't you blaspheme in here! It only took 20 more years for a horror film to actually win the big one, but only if you consider The Silence of the Lambs horror. Would you consider that one a horror? I wouldn't. I would actually consider Silence of the Lambs more of a psychological thriller or even a crime drama. But definitely not horror. No. Look, don't get me wrong, any movie where people's faces get ripped off is pretty much horror in my book, but sometimes the lines just get blurred. Yeah, like, is The Sixth Sense a horror movie? There's Ghost and Donnie Wahlberg scared the shit out of me, but then again, it was nominated for Best Picture, so maybe the Academy doesn't think so. They're very set in their ways, but that's not surprising once you consider their demographics, because on top of everything else, Oscar's so old. In 2012, the median age for an Oscar voter was 62 years and 14% were younger than 50. It's no wonder they never show love to genre movies because a huge chunk of the voters came from a time where they were considered sleazy and immature. It took decades for technology to catch up to the serious visions of sci-fi and horror directors, and our country had to go through some serious shit before horror movies were even seen as respectable. We're not trying to be ageist. We're just aware of the facts that it's these elder states people of Hollywood who are determining the winners and losers of every Oscars night. And the old guard just doesn't like to leave its comfort zone. I love the young people. After the Oscars So White incident, the Academy has promised to do a better job of representing a younger, more diverse Hollywood. So last year they purged some of their most decrepit voters and added 638 new members to their ranks, including John Boyega and Marlon Wayans, funny enough. Wow. Mm -hmm. It was a much needed injection of new blood, inducting new and younger directors, writers, and actors of color who all came up in the industry during the modern resurgence of sci-fi and horror and could have a deep affection for the genres. That's why this year, The Shape of Water and Get Out both have an excellent chance of walking away with gold. Logan and Blade Runner weren't nominated for Best Picture. I'm sad about it. Not okay. So I'm hoping that Get Out has a better chance, but if either Shape of Water or Get Out wins, it'll be a huge first for Hollywood and proof that the Academy is finally starting to get with the time. And giving sci-fi and horror films the respect that they always deserve. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Absolutely, we had a lot of fun making it. Now we wanna know what you think's gonna take best picture. Personally, I want Get Out to win. Agreed, but I want Blade Runner 2049 to take everything else Mad Max style this year. But if you have your thoughts, let us know in the comments below. And as always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd. And if you see us live tweeting, make sure to add us.